Hello and welcome to this tutorial in Premiere Pro. I'm Luisa Winters. Today I would like to continue talking about keyframes. Let's get to it. In here we see the same clips that we've been using so far and we had all of these keyframes here. I'm just going to go ahead and delete them. I'm going to get rid of the, the changes over time and I'm going to reset everything so that we start anew. So you see how I did that. I just clicked on this icon, I selected the keyframes, deleted them and then of course I clicked on the stopwatch. So now I'm going to do some global changes and for that I'm going to go to the scale again to maybe 20% or so, something like that, so that we can actually see the changes in, in position and rotation and all of that stuff. So the position is just going to go as we've done so many times, left to right, first the when then the what, so the when you saw me move the playhead all the way to the beginning and I'm going to keyframe position. Now I'll change the when, I'm moving the playhead to a couple of seconds uh, in time to the future and now I can move this to the right and here we go. Now I want you to notice that the path going from point A to point B is made out of these little dots. All of these dots actually represent frames so you know, right now we're moving from point A to point B on a straight line and that's perfectly fine. Look what happens when I move this keyframe all the way to the right. We see that these dots are now closer together. So each one of those dots is actually representing a frame, um, but I prefer to refer to those dots as moments in time. And they are not just showing me the moments in time, so the closer together they are, the slower the interpolation, so the slower the motion is going from left to right, but it's also showing me that it's going from point A to point B in a straight line. And just so that you know, that's called linear interpolation. Now, let me backtrack a tiny little bit. When it comes to interpolation, Premiere Pro, so in Adobe World, we are dividing these in two very distinct types. We have the spatial interpolation and we have the temporal interpolation. So right now I want to talk about spatial interpolation. Those are changes in space. So from point A to point B, in other words, X and Y coordinates. And you can tell me, hey, Luisa, if, it, if it's moving in space, it's doing so in time. And I would agree with you 100%. So every spatial interpolation, every time we go from point A to point B, is also changing in time. But not everything that is changing in time is also changing in space. For example, opacity is changing over time, but it's not moving. So in Adobe World, we make a very distinct difference between changes in space and changes in time. So let's talk about changes in space. Right now, moving from point A to point B in a straight line, it's linear interpolation. And here we go. In here, you see the dots that we were talking about? Well, one of these dots doesn't look like the others. And that's because that's not a dot at all. If you click and drag it, you see that it becomes a handle. And now we see that it's going from point A to point B, not in a straight line. And here we go. If we play this, there you go. It's just doing its little curve thing. And there you have it. But we still only have two keyframes. So we're clearly going from point A to point B, not in a straight line. Now, I would like to play this particular clip over and over and over. I want it to loop and I don't want to keep on going. So this is not really interpolation. This is the playback in the timeline. So if I move the playhead to the beginning and I press the letter I, I set an endpoint. Let me press the down arrow. That takes me to the edit point and I can press O and now I have an in to out point that are around this particular clip. And that's great, but that took too long to do. 
if I place my mouse cursor on top of the second clip and I press X, as in X marks the spot, there you go, in and out around that clip. Let me zoom out so you can see it. Not bad, huh? So I'm, now I'm gonna do it to the first clip, letter X, and there you go, I marked the in and out. So I'm going to add the loop button to this interface because by default it's not in there. So notice that here on the right hand side, I have a little plus sign. Go ahead and click there. And this guy is the loop playback button. I'm going to drag it to the buttons here. I'll click OK. And now when I loop it, it's going between in and out point, and you better believe it's gonna loop again and again and again. So this is very helpful for when you need to see an interpolation, an edit, whatever, you know, you just need to see it over and over again, and you don't wanna be moving the playhead manually and all of that, this is just gonna play until you stop it. And I think I'm gonna stop it now. There you go. And now I'm gonna change this interpolation a little bit. So here we go. I'm going to move this down like yay. And notice what happened. It's like, wait a minute, why did it leave this handle all the way up there? Well, let me zoom in here. And I can zoom in there by scrubbing this bar. Do you see how I have two keyframes, one next to the other? That is the importance of making sure that when you are going to change something on a keyframe, that you make darn sure that your playhead is on top of that keyframe that you want to adjust. And that's kind of important. So now I'm just gonna select the erroneous keyframe and I'm gonna delete it. And there you go. Now I can put my playhead on top of that, that keyframe. Notice what was happening. Let me do it again so you can see it and I'll explain as I do it. Boom, boom. That keyframe is in between two frames. So unless I press the shift key and I drag my playhead or I use my keyframe navigator, I will never be able to have my playhead right on top of that keyframe because it's in between frames. So here we go. Now that my playhead is above that keyframe, I can go here and I am going to adjust this about yay. And actually I wanna move the handles up. There you go. And up. And notice what's happening. I'm adjusting the keyframes even though my playhead is not on top of the first one. I can click and drag on those frames right here in the program panel. So I have two keyframes on doing this dome thing is happening. And now I'm going to place my playhead right in between the two keyframes. So at the top of the dome, so to speak, let me change this one here. I want you to notice that when I move my mouse, when I position my mouse right on top of the keyframe, do you see how it changes? So it's changing icon to indicate, that's my visual indication that, hey, your, your, your mouse cursor is right above the keyframe. Look at it here for the, for the handle. It's like, yep, click and drag. And now I'm gonna move my playhead. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a keyframe to this. Let me zoom out so you can see first keyframe here, second keyframe here, and the playhead right in the middle. I'm gonna add a keyframe right there. I'm gonna click on the word motion so that we can see it. And immediately if I move this, see how this is like flattened? Look what happens when I move the, key, the, the handles around. One handle controls this curve between the two keyframes, and this handle here on the left controls this curve. And by default, they are inversely related. So when one goes up, the other one goes down and vice versa. This is known as continuous Bezier. Continuous Bezier. So here we go. If you want to break the relationship between the handles, you can do that simply by make sure that you have your selection tool active. Press and hold the Alt 
in the control key and position your mouse cursor on top of one of the handles and notice that it changes into an upside down V. This is the convert tool and now if I click and drag, I broke the relationship between the two sides of the handle and now my hand, my, my, and now my interpolation is no longer continuous Bezier, but non-continuous Bezier. So I can have like two domes, uh, the two handles are not connected in any way. So linear, straight line in between the interpolation, Bezier, not a straight line, continuous Bezier, there is a relationship between incoming curve and outgoing curve, and of course, non-continuous Bezier, there is absolutely no relationship between those two. And you can change those in here in the effect controls panel. If you click on the word position, you select all of the keyframes that are assigned to that property. In other words, these three keyframes, notice that they turned blue. You can right click one of them, go to spatial interpolation, and you can go to linear, see, straight line. Right click again, spatial interpolation, Bezier, notice there is no relationship in between those curves, right? That's the non-continuous Bezier. And then, of course, right-click again, spatial interpolation, continuous Bezier, and now you see that there is a relationship. And of course, the last one under spatial interpolation, which is the auto Bezier, which is just telling you that you are not in charge of the curve, Premiere is, and it's going to do the curve depending on the relative position of the keyframes. It's just going to assign the curve for you, such as what you're seeing right now. Alrighty, spatial interpolation. There are two main kinds, linear, straight line, Bezier, curve. Of the Bezier, you can have Continuous Bezier, where there's a relationship between the incoming curve and the outgoing curve. Non-continuous Bezier, where there is no relationship between the incoming curve and the outgoing curve. And of course, Auto Bezier, in which you are not in control of the curve. Premiere Pro is, and it will do the curve for you according to the smoothest way in between the relative position of the keyframes. All right, this takes us to the end of this tutorial. If you liked it, please hit like, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>